It is uh, 10 past 2 in the morning. Just had a little pot noodle breakfast. <laughs> breakfast of champions. I'm feeling surprisingly awake. Um, kind of slept for a few hours, like pretty rough sleep. But um, when your body's that tired, you just kind of just kind of pass out. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, here we are. Why am I doing this? <laughs> I remember this last time getting off with the boys. It's such a ridiculous time. <laughs> we are about to leave and push for the summit. For sunrise, hopefully. It all goes well. <laughs> I just know it's going to be hard. Fuck. <laughs> Day two, here we go. <laughs> Okay, I'm just uh, just popping up to the summit, love. We'll be back in a few hours. <laughs> Do you need anything? <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be back in one piece. Um, use my sleeping bag if you get cold, yeah. Okay. All right. Love you. Love. Cheers. like I'm popping to the shops for a loaf of bread. <laughs> now, ooh, you ready? Let's go. <laughs> to the summit. On paper, the push for the summit is pretty straightforward, but in the dark, it can be hard to visualize. For the first hour or so, you work your way up to the main ridge and then it's one long hard slog along this ridge all the way to the top. For Nahu, this particular summit push meant more than most of his previous 1000 attempts. The last time he was up here, over three years ago, a 6.4 earthquake wreaked havoc. Masih trauma lah. Kita di guncang itu kan di puncaknya itu lah. Puncak Renjani itu. Ya ada lah. Saudara saya dari Lombok Timur itu tidak usah naik ke puncak karena sekarang ini sudah ada goncangan. Tapi tamu saya yang ngotot mau ke puncak itu akhirnya saya ikuti lah tamu ini. Nah gitu. Pas kita sampai topnya itu memang ada getaran sedikit, ada getarannya sedikit sempat uh, batu itu terbalik satu. Nah, tapi saya itu tidak hirokan itu batu itu. Nah, masih jam 6 itu tapi. Nah, setelah jam 7-nya itu, guncangannya itu sangat besar sekali. Makanya saya itu digun diguncang itu hampir eh, hampir jatuh ke apa ke timur itu kan ada danau danau segar muncar namanya itu. Nah, terus setelah saya jatuh sama tamu saya eh, sebentar itu uh, lagi dia gempa itu sebentar itu nah terbaliklah saya uh, ke atas tempat itu ke barat itu nah, setelah itu sampai itu terbelah dua lah gunung Renjani ini nah, longsor semua adalah tamu saya dua itu pas ikut uh, jatuh lah sama tamunya kalau di tracker itu pas itu banyak sekali itu grupnya itu uh, rodi tracker itu pikiran saya itu kalau di puncak pas gempa itu sudah enggak bisa ingat apa-apa pas itu adalah 5 menit lah itu pas terguncang itu kan ya rasanya sudah enggak akan hidup lagi lah gitu nah setelah itu ingatlah saya sama ibu saya dengan anak saya itu dengan bapak saya akan ingat nah, terus saya naik lagi pas itu Nah, naik lagi itu, nah, terus saya lihat tamu saya dua kan yang jatuh itu, waduh tamu saya jatuh dua, langsung saya tarik tamu itu kan, saya tarik yang dua itu, langsung dia nangis tamu itu yang dua itu, nah, setelah dia nangis itu saya naikkan, saya kasih minum, dan kasih apa istirahat sebentar, nah terus, nah setelah terjadi itu, nah gimana saya bilang gitu nggak sama tamu itu? Kamu mau hidup atau mati? Saya bilang gitu kan sama tamu. Oh, saya mau hidup. Wah, kalau kamu mau hidup, 
ikut lari sama saya. Gimana kencangnya saya lari? Itulah kencangnya kamu lari. Saya bilang. Dari puncak itu saya lari ke pos satu itu kan cuma satu jam 40 menit. Saya itu kan perjalanannya dari puncak itu ke pos satu itu ya paling lah empat jam atau tiga jam lebih lah. Tapi bisa saya lari itu satu jam 40 menit. Itu kan karena kita apa pemikiran kita itu kan kosong sekali ya pas itu. Nah, terus setelah saya telepon keluarga saya itu kan pas itu tidak bisa aktif semua dengan teman-teman juga di sini tidak bisa aktif. Nah, akhirnya pikiran saya itu anak saya, istri saya dan semua keluarga itu ya tertimbun dengan bangunan lah gitu. Ya setelah itu kan ada paling lah uh, satu jam lah itu mungkin kita nggak bisa ngapa-ngapain itu. Ya banyak sama teman. Anyone who suffered any sort of trauma knows that to return to the scene of that traumatic event can be really difficult. So, although he'd never admit it himself and he'd rather not talk about it, what Nahu is doing here should not be underplayed. In the darkness, we began the ascent, the first part of the climb involving that steep push up to the main ridge that would lead us to the summit. Making our way up to the ridge and you really have to work for it like straight from the tents you have to push up quite a steep face and it's all like slippy oh man it's like this all the way of course being a volcano there is an unlimited amount of volcanic ash sand rocks and dust everywhere you you can't avoid it okay just coming up to the top to the top of the ridge i can't wait to have a break i don't know if you can see my torch no idea if you can see but super dusty so sometimes you want to have your mask on but then when you have your mask on it's harder to breathe Give you an idea of how dusty it is. So much dust and sand all over me already. <laughs> so, from here, how long do you think? Mm, maybe two and a half hours. Two and a half hours. Yes. All the way up the bridge. Hello. How are you? Yeah, I'm good. Fine. Ah, tired. Fine. Tired, yeah. Fine. <laughs> you? I'm fine. Good, good. Where come from? Ah, Daddy Ingris. Good, Ingris. Yeah, yeah. England. Liverpool. Eh, uh, Liverpool. <laughs> yeah. This is first. Second. Wow. Yeah, second time. Liverpool, Mohamed Salah. Yeah, Mohamed Salah. Salah. <laughs> Sadio Mane. Hey, Sadio Mane. <laughs> Good. How many times for you? Uh, this is first. First time? Yeah. Nice. It's good when you get to the top. <laughs> Hard work. <laughs> Hard work? Hmm. Yeah. That's an understatement. With the wind picking up, we pushed on into the darkness. For hours, it's just the trudge of feet against the rocks, each step forward a small victory. Every break is a welcome one. Quick wafer break. While walking, all I could see was my torch lighting up Nahu's bright green back. The mountain man battling on one step at a time. The huge drop off into darkness either side of us, just one wrong step away. This ridge is a punishing knife edge that gets steeper the higher you climb.
seriously, this stuff is brutal. You know, you're pushing and working so hard, and at least half of your energy is wasted as you slip back down. We are on this proper loose shale, which is very much like a two step sword and then you slip. Two steps forward. So you can push a bit harder. Two steps forward, one step back. I remember it very well. From last time around. This was the hardest part of the climb. And I can confirm again. This is the hardest part of the climb. It's so tough to push through. Your legs are in agony. It's very cold. All you can see is this shale. You just have to keep pushing through. Just little bursts pushing up. The steepest point is the last hour or so on, on your final push to the summit. It's at this point where the ridge is about 45 degrees inclined. It is every bit as gruelling, demoralising and tough as it looks and sounds. Like, I promise I'm not being dramatic here. Still so far to go. I need a break. Okay. The time. I don't know if you can see that. Time is 5.31. It's so hard. <laughs> like I said at the start of this, after four, nearly four years, you forget the pain. You forget how hard it is. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this. Yep. The sun, the sunrise is about an hour away and you can just start to see light creeping over there. Just gonna take like a five minute break and then I'll be pushing to the summit. Hopefully this will be the final push. <laughs> now who has gone ahead? Because he's just an absolute beast. He's <laughs> just smashing it. I think it's time for a vital snack. This is uh, basically a jammy dodger. One of my uh, favourite parts of the film from climbing Rinjani 2017 is this bit where two of my mates, Roy and Debol, are really struggling. <laughs> and they, uh, it looked like they weren't going to make it. They were having a Frodo and Sam movement on Mount Doom. We almost there, Dan. Oh, not too long to go. Oh, we are both dying. 50 meters. And then Nahu came along and saved them with a couple <coughs> of jammy dodges. Our guys just saved our life. A porter came up behind us with some jammy dodges. I think it might have genuinely just saved our life. It's just the hardest thing I've ever done. I'd be happy if I'd never see a mountain ever again in my life. D-Ball and Roy. Shout out to you. <laughs> Some of you might be thinking, ah, I watched the last episode and Josh runs a lot, so surely his fitness levels make it easier. They don't. <laughs> they really don't. I was hoping maybe it would be a bit easier, but <laughs> it's not. I don't think you can climb this mountain without suffering. Unless you're like a North Face athlete, which I am not. I never will be. <laughs> yeah, I may never make it as a North Face athlete, but I think that's okay. You know, I'm not sure I could handle grueling punishments like this one every single week. Okay, boys and girls. This is it. The push to the summit. Here we go. 
With the new day beginning to break on the eastern horizon, I pushed on and upwards. The summit was now within touching distance. After another half hour of intense climbing, I found the Who waiting for me. Just a few steps left. This is it. Nearly there. Yeah. See ya. Here we go. Hello. Hello. Breakthrough. 3,726 meters on top of Lombok. My second time up here, but no less rewarding. Feels so good to get up here. <laughs> Just waiting for the sunrise now. For Nahu, his 482nd time up here, this was perhaps one of the more profound. As he shivered in his blue sleeping bag, puffing on a cigarette, I knew that this was a special moment for him. Ya ada lah sedikit menyentuh lah pas kita sampai area itu kan, ada lah ingatnya saya itu kemarin saya digoncang di sini sampai itu pemikiran saya tapi sedikit setelah itu hilang sudah. Ya itulah membuat saya hilang pemikiran untuk goncangan itu. The views up here never fail to deliver. You know, this, this is why we climb. We sat there together with a handful of other brave climbers, shivering and waiting. Ding in. <laughs> waiting for the sun. And there she is, reliable as ever big ball of gas that keeps us all alive. You know, there was a there was a moment last year, in fact almost exactly a year ago from this, where I was climbing in the Lake District during the middle of the pandemic and with all the lockdowns going on and you know just a really crazy period of life yeah. and i was up there watching the sunrise and it was the first sunrise i'd watched in far too long so i made i made myself a promise right there and then that i'd i'd watch a few more over the coming years i can't remember the last time i watched the sunrise it's, um, i really enjoy the process of getting up early like I have done this morning, getting the cameras out, finding the light. I love that and I've missed it, you know? I haven't done that this year. But yeah, I just can't wait to get to, to Lombok and like make watching the sunrise part of my routine and sunset. It's just beautiful. Exactly one year later, here I was. It doesn't get any better than this.
Even with the sun having risen, bathing Lombok in a golden light, it remained brutally cold up there. <laughs> can you ask him, can he describe how cold it was? <laughs> oh, very cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm praising. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> yeah. After snapping a few shots of Nahu and some of the local lads, it was time to get back down to camp. If it wasn't so cold, I could stay up here all day. But it is really cold. <laughs> and we have a lot more walking to do, so we're going to head back down. What I love about coming back down the ridge is that now it's daylight, you get to drink in this amazing view. This has to be one of the best views in Indonesia. It's just insane. Absolutely unreal. On one side, you've got this giant volcano and a crater. And then on the other side, Beautiful green hills over there, Sambalun. It's hard to, like you're just looking at it and you feel like you're in a film. Unreal. You can also see just how horrendously steep this thing is. That was me about an hour ago. In the daytime, you can uh, really kind of gauge how narrow this thing is and you're climbing up in pitch darkness you really don't want to take a mister you know you can end up in Sembalun down there or in the crater lake down there take your pick it's pretty sketchy <laughs> I do feel bad for all the people that we're passing who are still going up and we're going down man it fucking sucks <laughs> feel bad enough to mention it to camera but to stick around offering words of encouragement and inspiration <laughs> nah i'm done see ya <laughs> nahu clearly had a similar idea he was steaming down the mountain like an express train he's leaving this huge cloud of dust and ash in his wake as well as a struggling youtuber just trying to stay alive Whatever's for breakfast must be good. Kalau turun itu kan karena pasiran kan. Pasirnya itu ya enak sekali kita meluncur turun. Ya kalau naik ya agak sulit lah. Sulit kita cepat kalau naik kan. Kalau turun ya wah, kayak apa? <laughs> kayak kereta api. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. Selamat pagi. Selamat pagi. Pagi. How are you doing? Okay. You sleep well? No. No. <laughs> Not in vain. Is it difficult? <sighs> yeah. Every bit is as hard as last time. Put it this way, you've made the right decision. Can barely yeah. speak. You made the right choice. <laughs> he was like, "It's definitely the hardest thing I've done." We'll probably be leaving here in the next hour, and the <laughs> starts all over again. <laughs> yeah, that's that's accurate. Within the hour, we'd eaten breakfast, cleaned up, changed, and packed. I would have loved to tell you that. This was the end of the adventure, and we all strolled back down the mountain and lived happily ever after. But no, this journey was far from over. Day two. <laughs> day two. Well, start of day two for you. Leaving camp. 10.20. You ready to head down to the crater? Yeah. Down to the lake. So we're going to go whoop down there. It is beautiful. You're gonna love this. We had a whole day of trekking ahead, making our way down from camp into the crater, along the lake, and back up the other side of the crater rim. 
Heading down to the lake. What's the lake called? Is it Sigara Anna? Yeah. Imagine it. You've just gotten back from the 3,726 metre summit. You're absolutely knackered. You've been up since 1.30 a.m. And before that, you'd had a really shit sleep. The last thing you want to be doing is pushing on, descending down into this crater. Every step is a hazard, and you really have to focus. And juga kita takutkan nanti kalau turun itu hati-hati karena kita itu karena kekuatan kita agak berkurang. Nah akhirnya kita harus turun hati-hati. Nanti jangan sampai kakinya itu nanti apa lecet sama batu lah gitu. Makanya santai aja turun lah gitu. Enak. Kalau cepat tidak boleh. Itu. Ya, harus fokus ya. Of course, if you're a porter, you guys are fast. Chip up. Too easy. This is always. I say always as I've done this loads. Like I've done it once before. I remember the exact same last time. Like. After summer thing, you've got to come all the way down into the crater. And it just saps your mental energy, like you're trying to focus where you're putting your feet. It's hard. Not asking for sympathy, just saying it's hard. Fortunately, the views on offer make up for some of the pain. When you look at stuff like this, it's hard to believe you're in Lombok sometimes. It's just so different to the rest of the island. Not entirely sure where we are right now, but you certainly wouldn't say Lombok, would you? It's not more like some sort of mystical forest in Europe. Creepy. I'm definitely not putting that in the video. Causing that bit. With the clouds swirling through this foreign landscape, it really did feel mystical. Of course, Mount Ranjani is no stranger to magic and the unexplained worlds beyond ours. Kalau niat kita bagus untuk hanya menikmati pemandangan, ya mungkin dia itu tidak akan mengganggu kita lah gitu. Intinya niatnya kita lah naik gunung itu. Kalau merusak mungkin dia akan mengganggu lah gitu. Okay, uh, so we can't disrespect the environment, but Layla definitely had one or two issues with the path that we were taking here. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense why it's taking so long to get down to the <laughs> lake. Like, the route makes no sense. It's like we're going that way and then up and then that way and then that way and that way. <laughs> like, who, did, who made this? <laughs> who designed this? Oh dear. Like I said, everyone is knackered on day two. It's, it's tough going. Eventually, after a few hours of pushing through this mystical landscape, we found ourselves on the lake shore. I can see the lake, I can see the porters. We're so close. Yeah. I'm so hungry now. Are you hungry? I just need energy, I think. It was hard. Can't wait to just sit down, take my shoes off and have some scran. Re-energise for the next step. Yeah, um, before we think about the next phase of this trek, let's just eat and sleep first. Just taking a quick nap. Whilst our lunch is cooking, and then I'll tell them about the lake and all the shit, <laughs> all the geography shit. Do they do they really want to know? Yes, the it's, it's actually stuff? really interesting. But just let me sleep and. Food. You sure? You're not the only one who thinks the geography stuff is interesting. No, it's super cool. Volcanoes. We're in the middle of a volcano. I'm taking a nap in a volcano. That's the thumbnail right there. 
And the title, like, taking a nap in a volcano. It's not every single day that you can say you had lunch inside a volcano, hey? Energy food. This is him, the spot. And as far as volcanic craters go, this is one of the most spectacular. This is Sigara Anak. Um, wish I knew more geography. Something about a lake and a, a volcan volcanic crater. Pretty impressive, I can tell you that. Especially these clouds rolling through at the moment. Really, really beautiful. And over there, currently behind the clouds, is the active volcano inside this crater. So this is called Gunung Baru, which basically means like new mountain. And this is what was left behind after the explosion, which is kind of hard to believe. This whole mountaintop, this whole thing blew its lid. Let me explain. All right, so Mount Rinjani hasn't always looked like this. At one point, it looked like this. Where the crater sits today, there was once much more of a classic volcanic cone. In fact, this cone was called Mount Samalas. Through research on old texts, scientists have recently discovered that in the year 1257, Mount Samalas was the location of one of the largest volcanic eruptions known to humanity. It was far bigger than Krakatoa, Tambora, and any of the other eruptions you may have learned about. In a magma chamber beneath Mount Samalas, the pressure increased until eventually it erupted out of the top. As the chamber emptied, it left this huge, hollow space and the mountain became unstable. Eventually, under its own massive weight, the mountain collapsed in on itself, causing a huge eruption. You know, th this thing was blasting out one million tons of material a second, covering most of Lombok in pyroclastic flows and you know, there was lava and ash coating the whole island, as well as parts of Sumbawa and Bali. It also created this huge volcanic cloud of ash and that rose up into the atmosphere and dimmed the sun for months on end, perhaps even years. Scientists have since found ash from Mount Samalas packed into our polar ice caps, indicating the global impact of the eruption. Meanwhile, archaeologists uncovered several mass burial sites in London that are linked to terrible famines that ripped through Europe in the years after the eruption. So, this ash cloud had disrupted normal global weather patterns, causing crops to fail across the whole planet and killing thousands, if not millions of people. So, this huge crater, which is about 8.5 kilometers wide, this is what remains from that huge eruption. The size and scale of everything is, like everywhere you go here, it's just unbelievable. It's hard to fathom. Especially like, can you imagine this whole, this was a whole mountain, <laughs> this whole crater, and it just blew its lid. It's insane. Even the new volcano, which I'm gonna try and get a shot of when the clouds clear, it's fucking massive. Absolutely terrifying if you were here when it erupted which you could do at any point, it is active. <laughs> With locals now camping and fishing on the shores, it's difficult to imagine such catastrophic destruction, you, you know? It's so beautiful and serene here. Back on the road again. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> oh. First few steps are the hardest. My legs. You'll get into the groove. Bodies on fire. So, the good news is that the next hour or so walking along the lake is beautiful. A little bit cloudy today, but it's really nice. And the bad news is that the only way to get out of this crater is to climb up. Uh, not 
every day that you get to walk along the lake of a volcano in the massive volcanic crater. <laughs> Pretty epic stuff. This is probably my favourite. Ah, uh, I don't know. I've got many favourites of this this trekking experience, but I do love this part of it. It's bloody good. As we walked along the shore, I couldn't take my eyes off Gunong Baru. It's sat here inside the crater, smoking away, kind of minding its own business. But it's a very real and breathtaking reminder that this volcano is still very active. That's it. Kita juga kan sering nginep di danau itu pas dia apa letusannya ada itu kan kemarin tuh. Tapi ya mau harus harus diam di di sana. Kita mau lari. Udah kemana kita lari? Ya akhirnya kita tunggu reda dulu lah, baru lah kita. Ya banyak sih orang-orang berlarian juga ada yang takut-takut. Kalau kita sudah terbiasa di sana itu mendengar apa letusannya itu terbiasa. Tidak sih, cuman baunya aja, bau belerang itu. That's new for you. He really is incredibly laid back, a straight up chiller. But there's one thing that may just ruffle his feathers. So, starting to leave the lake, and we are looking for a way up and out of this crater. There used to be a way, which was over there, where all these boulders are. And once again, the earthquake has drastically changed things. So that route is no longer viable. We kind of have to hunt out a new one. Yeah, he does. Penestrim sekarang diganti jalurnya itu banyak longsor masalahnya. Dia jatuh karena gempa dari gunung ini, runtuhan gunung Sangkareang namanya ini, yang ini yang tertutup ini Sangkareang. Itu yang jatuh itu semua makanya pas hujan semua batu itu apa jalan ke pergi ke danau itu airnya itu kan besar di sana itu. There's various videos on YouTube that show the scale of the destruction on Mount Rinjani in the moments after that earthquake. All around the crater huge landslides were triggered. These boulders were the remnants of that. Can you imagine being here when all of this came tumbling down? Jesus. In 2017, it had been relatively easy to find our way up, but now... So Nahu just said that this used to be the route somewhere <laughs> going up there. Uh, apparently I was walking there in 2017, but it's hard to recognize anything really. It's a good job the boys weren't there when it happened. After a few moments of confusion, we eventually found our way. The unfortunate truth of this trek is that what goes down must come up. The only way to get to our second campsite was to hike back up the other side of this massive crater wall. Kind of difficult when you've been awake for nearly 14 hours and haven't stopped walking. As the sun began to sink behind the looming crater rim, we made our way through long grass and onto the higher slopes, drinking in this incredible view. where you've been climbing for like a good solid block, like an hour or whatever, and then suddenly you put your head up. What a view. I keep saying it, but it's not every day that you get to do this. So you really have to appreciate every second, right? But not too much. <laughs> you still got to focus on the task at hand and making sure you don't die. When you've got something that epic behind you, <laughs> it can be hard not to want to turn around and have a look, but you really have to just keep focused on every single rock. 
point of view that it's an active volcano. <laughs> if you're paying attention, you'll notice that I'm out of breath. Um, well, that's not really surprising. Um, things get really gnarly up here, you know? There are some proper, proper steep drops. Like, don't look down. <laughs> That one is uh, not for the what people with vertigo. <laughs> that is a steep drop. And you need to grab hold of the ropes and make use of stairs that clearly would not make it through anything remotely resembling a health and safety check. I'm going to call them the Green Steps because that's what they are. That's their official name, the Green Steps. Bloody hell. <laughs> I'm not sure if this is safe, but it's the only way, it's the only way up. Nice work, Layla. Easy. It's not that easy. Or she's smashing it. Proper climbing. <laughs> Even though it had been three years, it seems that Nahu was really finding his stride again. As if this was all still a muscle reflex for him. Nahu. <laughs> there he is. Absolute beast, man. Absolute monster. A real man of the mountain. Look at him, he's still going. Plowing on. Ya, karena kita itu, ya, karena seking kuatnya kita jalan, nah itu jadinya sudah terbiasa badan kita kayak orang olahraga lah gitu kan. Kalau setiap hari itu kan tak merasa sakit lah atau gitu. Kalau sekali seminggu atau sekali satu bulan itu kan sudah terasa sakit lah gitu. Oh yeah. I was feeling the pain all right. I was lagging behind at the back and I could really feel my body starting to struggle and you know it had been 16, nearly 16 hours since I first started hiking. Layla was also finding things difficult. Safe to say we are both feeling it at this point. Yeah. The light was fading fast and you could hear the winds picking up. Uh, we could just feel our energy sapping away and we both knew that, yeah, we're, we're going to have to dig deep here all over again. How are you feeling? I'm about done. You're about done? done. Yeah. This final push was all hands on deck, giving absolutely everything we had left. And finally, oh, we found ourselves. It's so windy. It is windy. On those last few steps to freedom. You got this. Impeccably times, we reached our camp just as the day faded away. Did it? He smashed it. Woo. How was that? That was tough. Oh. Wrapped up warm in the tent, we were treated to a beautiful view of Bali's Mount Agung. <laughs> I love this hot tea. Warming you up? Yeah. All toasty in the sleeping bag. So cozy. It feels so good to be in the tent. You had to uh, after that ordeal. You had to dig really hard at the end, there, didn't you? That last bit, I was like, please. <laughs> I just need to get to the top. 
it was getting dark and it was getting really windy and I was like I know, right? It was fucking, the wind was howling, mm. the light was going, I was like, fuck. But we did it. We did it, and tomorrow's just downhill. Easy cruising. Easy cruising. How are you coping on five hours a week? I'm not. <laughs> I don't know, to be honest. I don't know, I don't know, not down the lake, didn't I? At this point, your body's just like, doesn't have a clue what's going on. Just like pfft, completely. So can't wait to sleep. <laughs> Look at this absolute feast. <laughs> I'm so excited. So this is our our last night in the tent. Are you sad about that? <laughs> I'm so excited to get back into our bed. <laughs> Warm bed. Just uh, just one more day tomorrow. Hiking down to San Aru. Back where it all, be, all began. Mm -hmm. After mm -hmm. food. It's lights out, man. Cannot wait to sleep. I guess we'll see you tomorrow morning for day three. How's that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I have yours. No. <laughs> I definitely, I really need this. This was the kind of sleep where you could easily pass away for good. I was done. I might not ever open my eyes again. But then, as the sun comes back up, you remember what's outside your tent. struggling to think of a better place to wake up. Good morning. Welcome to day three on Rinjani. Day three. Look at this, what a view this is to wake up to. Wow. What a view. I've lost, lost count of how many times I've said what a view on this trip. I should have like a counter in the bottom saying what a view. <laughs> I feel like I've said that a lot, but how can you not in a place like this? It is, yeah, really amazing to wake up here. Our, uh, our campsite, I don't know if you can see, it's just down there. Um, great spot. We're the only ones up here. How did I sleep? Better than last night. Um, slept like a baby who's in hospital after being spun round in a washing machine. <laughs> I don't know, that was a bit dark, sorry. <laughs> Today is the day when we head back home. Mixed feelings about that because one part of your body is saying like you're super excited to get home to your own bed, comforts, showers, because like honestly I fucking reek, like I smell so bad. <laughs> the dirt is everywhere and then like your body is just, you know, it's grueling. I. Uh, so there's probably more than half of my body is saying I'm really excited to get home. Probably more like 90%. But there's also a little bit which is like, fuck, I don't want to go home. Like, it's been such an amazing adventure. I love it up here. It's unreal to see like, yesterday, we started on this ridge and then went all the way up to the top, all the way down, and then down there all the way across the lake. It is just mental. It's day two is always like a killer. Like we're absolutely fucked by the end of that. Hence why we slept better, I think, because your body is just like, just go to sleep. Doesn't matter where you are, just, just sleep. <laughs> so yeah, home sweet home. We'll be heading down here, down to Senaru and into the rainforest. 
which should be quite nice. Looking forward to that. Sorry for the rambling. This video is probably far too long already, but that's me, that's Josh Edwards. Let's go see how Layla's doing. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm okay. How did you sleep? Uh, better than the first night. That's what I said, better than the first night. Mm -hmm. But still... Not fabulous. <laughs> Do you feel a bit better? Yeah, a little bit. My legs are a bit sore. Yeah. But... I said I slept like a baby, but a baby who's in hospital after like being spun round in a washing machine. Do <laughs> <laughs> you think that's a bit dark? <laughs> a little bit. Maybe I should have said that's like... so specific. I slept like roadkill because I was like, <laughs> I was dead, but I was also in pain. Yeah. Anyway. Ready? Might as well put you down. <laughs> I feel like it at this point. <laughs> you ready to head home? I'm ready. Down to Senaru. Yeah. Sick. So, the final day. It always feels good to be on that home stretch. And despite how badly all of us slept and how tired we were. Apa Yeah, Mike. Mike. You sleep well? Uh, no. <laughs> because they're big win. Yeah, it was noisy last night. There was an energy in all of us. Even the who seemed to be bouncing. <laughs> yeah, senang sekali ya, sangat senang sekali. Karena ya dua malam tiga hari itu kita tidak pernah ketemu kan. Nah, ya sangat senang sekali kita ketemu. Nice. Rindu lah. <laughs> Porters have caught up with us already. They're so fast, man. Death, taxes, and porters passing you. These are the three certainties in life. Heading down to Senaru, you're treated to one of the best parts of the trek. The rainforest on this side of the mountain is mesmerizing. Yeah, kita suka uh, banyak burung dan suara itu tidak ya kayak musik lah. <laughs> Yeah. I mean, look at it. It looks like something out of a film. You know, I'm half expecting David Attenborough to just stroll out in front of Nahu and ask us where we're headed. Look at this. We've got beautiful ferns, all kinds of moss. There's just so much here, like Nahu was just saying to us that um, it's like an area of scientific interest, like people come and collect data here because it's there's so much going on. Banyak sih diceritakan oleh peneliti ya, ya peneliti itu dia bilang bahan-bahan obatnya itu kan banyak sekali di hutan Senaru dia bilang itu. Tapi kita itu belum bisa untuk uh, apa mengolahnya di sini dan bilang gitu. Kalau kita yang bisa, kalau orang sini itu belum bisa, makanya kita teliti dulu mana yang jadi obat, mana yang yang enggak dan bilang gitu. Tapi kalau saya, setelah kita teliti, yang paling terbanyak di sini saya lihat hutannya jadi obat di sini. Dia bilang gitu. So who was just saying people use natural medicine from the rainforest? So they've Carved this out of the tree. Ada juga kan orang-orang lokal itu ngambil sedikit-sedikit. Terus orang-orang bilang, loh kenapa kayu ini diambil kulitnya sedikit-sedikit? Nah akhirnya orang-orang yang berpengalaman bilang, oh ini untuk obat sakit perut, ini untuk obat apa uh, malaria dia bilang gitu. Nah, kadang dimasak anaknya kulitnya itu dan campur garam sedikit. Nah, airnya itu di langsung diminum lah gitu. Uh, look at this. I keep saying it. Look at it. Look at it. It's just a beautiful, beautiful place. Really enjoying this. And the closer we get down to the finish line, 
the more I'm like, no, I don't want it to end. I know up there I was like, oh, 90% want it to end. And now it's like shifting. On the final stretch of an adventure like this, your mind tends to wander. You start summing things up and reflecting. What have I learned? And what's the big takeaway here? Oh yeah, takeaway. What's for dinner? I was really happy to have met up and climbed with Nahu again. He's a fantastic guide and I'm just really happy that he had this chance to get up to the summit again and put to bed any last lingering angst about the earthquake. It was so good to see him once more and he's now someone that I consider a friend. Yeah, sangat senang, sangat senang sekali. Temu sama Mr. Joss. <laughs> Two time. Uh... <laughs> awesome. Last time you went up. Oh yeah. He, he always remind he always remembered you as like always smiling and laughing. Oh yeah. Like he, he didn't show any signs of being tired. <laughs> like all the boys? Or just me? Oh, just, yeah. Ask ask him was it just me? Yeah, yeah, but some of them are not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. No, just you. Does he remember any <laughs> of the, the boys? Does he remember any of the other boys? Masih ingat sama uh, your mom's like you were always walking with him. Yeah. And that you. Yeah, uh, And he's he kind of remembers your friends as like just you like walking quite apart. Yeah. Yeah. But you were always with him. <laughs> and you were always like keen and enthusiastic. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't show signs of being tired. <laughs> nice. I'll take that. <laughs> It's kind of different to how I remember it. <laughs> I remember coming down here on the last day and everyone was just <laughs> destroyed. <laughs> I was in a particularly bad mood. Um, it's funny what happens to you when you have a lack of energy, lack of sleep. I was de dehydrated. Um, and all of that combined to make me a proper miserable bastards on that final day <laughs> you don't really see it in the film because i hid it well with the editing but i was fuming <laughs> um i was like almost not almost i was fully convinced that my mate debol had taken my water because because there's so many of us we were kind of rationing the water and he was just in my view <laughs> He was drinking all of the water, which was mine. And this is still a laughing, like an ongoing joke with me and my mates today. Like I really threw a, a hissy fit on that last day and like just purposely decided to go dehydrated <laughs> on the climb down through this beautiful forest. So <laughs> maybe you know who remembers me from the first or second day, but the third day I was skulking at the back. I have to say, this time around I feel much better, in much better shape. Maybe I've had more sleep, maybe I'm used to it a bit more, maybe I've just got more water. <laughs> It's probably that last one. <laughs> yeah, th this trip had of course brought back so many memories for me. Now, I haven't seen my mates properly for over a year and a half now, um, thanks to the pandemic and then moving to the other side of the world. And I, I still don't know when I'll see them next. I miss them a lot. Retracing our steps in this special place was really nice. It was nostalgic and it makes me smile thinking about them watching this and reminiscing about our adventure. And of course, I'm made up with how well Layla did. At the start of this trip, I, I kid you not, she was sat on the sofa welling up at the thought of doing it. You know, she, she didn't think that she had it in her. She was worried she was gonna hold me back and you know, just lots of reasons why not to do it. But now here she was, Queen of Rinjani. 
<laughs> she'd absolutely smashed it. And I'd like to think that this whole thing gave her a little bit of a confidence boost. A reminder that she's capable of far more than she thinks. You can move mountains or climb them when you put your mind to it. I think that's why I love climbing myself. It's the physical representation of overcoming challenges and proving to myself what I can do. It makes me feel alive and reminds me of how good it feels to, to really push myself. I, I can't get enough of it. And you tell them, I say, their food is always delicious. Dia bilang, masakannya selalu enak. Terima kasih. Yeah, terima kasih. Can you ask them? Do they do they have to like? Do they learn to cook as porters, or it's just like? Belajar belajar masak sebelum jadi porter katanya. Ah, dari rumah? Yeah, dari rumah. Yeah, from home. Ah, nice. And then can you say, without them, it's impossible for us to climb. So, terima kasih. Dia bilang terima kasih karena kalau tidak ada porter, tidak bisa dia naik. <laughs> yeah. Tell them, Kelsey. Yeah, big shout out to the porters. Without them, none of this is possible at all, right? Like, you just can't do an expedition like this without these guys. They're the backbone of the whole thing, and I am eternally grateful for their help. They're great guys, and clearly, they have the best flip flop maker in Lombok on speed dial. sign is finally here. This is the exit. A few more steps. After many hours of rambling down through the rainforest, we finally reached our holy grail. The end of the path at Senaru. Back where it all began. Ooh. Well done, Josh. Did it! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, we'll do some photos. Obviously got to do some photos. <laughs> well done, Leila. High five. Terima kasih, Nahu. Nice one. <laughs> <laughs> Classic Nahu. Yeah, no biggie. The poor bloke is absolutely knackered at this point. Like, he just wants to get home and see his family. Obligatory photos snapped. Found our transport. Made our goodbyes. I'll see you soon. See you. See you guys. Bye. Bye. <laughs> All right. Okay. Bye. Feels good to be back. Heading home. Heading home. <laughs> we smashed that. Yeah, we did. Let me just say, I am proud of us. <laughs> Yep, mission accomplished. Until next time, Mount Rinjani. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch. I hope you've enjoyed it. And something that would really help me out um, is maybe if you, if you share it with someone else who you think might also enjoy watching. That would be great. And yeah, I'll catch you soon for another adventure in Lombok. See you maybe in another four years. <laughs>